Hi everyone, this week the video should be useful to some of you as it's about design choices and readability, which nowadays comes under the fancy umbrella term of UX, which is practically useless since that encompasses almost everything in the game. Anyway, I deliberately did things step by step to make the concepts clearer, hopefully. I've been putting off making this video due to the volume of footage I'd have to edit, but let's get into it shall we? Last week we left you with the exciting question of what do these boxes do? The answer is they are weapons for the ship, mostly. So if you aren't interested in design, then that's it, you're done with this video. Goodbye, have a nice day. If you are interested in design, then make the video full screen since we're talking about readability and the small things on the screen. So it's all going to be focused on the top left hand corner. Okay, so now you're done with that. Let's begin. As I mentioned earlier, the boxes are weapons, but they have a fair bit of information that could be conveyed to the player. Let's pause and take a look. What information can the box give to the player? That it's a pickup, what type of pickup it is, what might it do, what do I do with it, and secondary information, just anything else that might be useful but not essential. And we have to look at the priorities of these. Of course, we could have a pop-up when we get near the object that has a nice text readout telling us all about the object. E.g. it's a plasma cannon that does straight damage and should be plugged into the main weapon slot behind the pilot's chair. But this game doesn't do text. It's a tough break, kids. First, let's make a mess. The first one, that it's a pickup. This is commonly conveyed with particle effects or having the object float and spin. We could also have the glow pulse. Those are common methods that will be employed for pickups in, in a lot of games. Uh, but none of these are useful here. Um, the character will eventually grab them out of storage and will have already picked them up. So we can skip this stage entirely really. So let's move on. So what type of pickup is it? Well, a good place to start is icons. Everyone understands icons. These are going to take tweaking over time since they will be so small on screen. Uh, with the first version I didn't account for the bloom so they bleed a little too much. So I do two things. I invert them so the actual icon glows and I change the colour away from bright white so we have a little more definition. These icons are a bit easier to distinguish and a player would learn them over time. But we have an instant problem with the game's overall design that interferes with this simple system. Uh, the game can have a lot of different weapons, so a rocket icon could mean a simple damage on impact object, it could mean a huge dumb fire bomb, or it could be an ion rocket to disable an enemy ship temporarily. Uh, we just can't tell from that. So we could have a million different icons if we just go with that. Uh, so with all of these options on the table, there's no way to get that information clearly into a tiny icon. Besides, what a weapon does, its actual function, which is number three in the list, is far more important than what it is in gameplay terms. So this symbol is actually secondary information, so we'll bump it down to number five in the list. That's fine because we have another important tool at our disposal that's even better than the shape of an icon, and it's easier to distinguish at a small size. Colour. So let's change the glow colour to give us two pieces of information to describe the weapon. Plasma is always purple because in-game plasma weapons are purple and ion is teal. Um, some other colours aren't finalised yet but we'll stick with this concept. So that's number two and number three covered on the list, uh, mostly. This isn't enough information yet. Uh, weapons have different abilities but they also come in different sizes uh, and that leads us into number three. Where do we put it? We still have one useful tool that we haven't used yet, and that is overall shape. This can be used to demonstrate information about the pickup, and also about where the pickup goes. It's child's play. I mean, putting the square peg in the square hole is a favourite toy of very young children, so if anyone fails to match the shapes here, then they are deeply stupid or handle the stress of space combat very, very badly. So the small weapon is round and you place it in the place that is a round hole. 
all we need to do now is extend that concept to each other type of pluggable ship function that we feel like and have space for. Uh, currently it's a large gun, a small gun, a drone and a mine slot. Theoretically we could have a bunch more as the ship functions are entirely modular. Uh, we could have an engine plug-in, a tractor beam plug-in uh, and one for the sensors even if we felt the need to make things more customizable. So let's clarify the five things we need to know. Have we done them? It's a pickup, and we'll theoretically start in storage, so that doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be flashy. And two, three, and four are covered by the color, which shows the function, the shape, which declares the type, and the shape again in conjunction with the receptacle, which shows where it goes. And number five is just extra information, which is the icon. And that uh, it shows the delivery method of the weapon, whether it's a solid or a beam or an energy ball. Obviously, this is the first implementation and things will be tweaked and polished, but you should understand the principles. And I'll reiterate that there's nothing wrong with having text, I'm just stating that you don't need it. I also realise now that I could have not bothered with this entire video. I could have just pointed you to road sign design, they use all of these principles so you can tell what things are likely to be from very far away with giving you more information as you get closer. Right, I have to clean up all this mess here since the ship is a bomb site. Uh, set things up so defaults can work and then spend the next week cleaning up a load of little bugs to handle edge cases. I know this because I'm recording the audio a good week, after, a good week and a half even after I made the video. Uh, I have plenty of tasks to get on with, and I'm not going to be making a video about debugging and testing. There are many far more qualified people than entered it who can do that. Uh, so, will there be another video soon? I don't know. I haven't decided. But anyway, bye for now.